Hey, how's it going everybody? In this programming terms video, we're going to look at the term memoization. So let's go ahead and take a look at the definition of memoization, and then we'll look at a code example to see exactly what this means. So according to Wikipedia, memoization is an optimization technique used primarily to speed up computer programs by storing the results of expensive function calls and returning the cached result when the same input occurs again. Uh, so that may be a little confusing just by the definition alone. So let's go ahead and look at a code example. Now my code example here is going to be in Python, but just like my other programming term videos, it's not really the language that I want you to take away from it. It is the concept of the term itself. So this will apply to several other programming languages as well. So the first part of the memoization is this expensive function here. And I made a function called expensive func. And what it does is it just comes in here and pr prints out that it is computing the value that we pass in, then it sleeps for one second, and then it just returns the square of the number. So the time.sleep isn't actually computing anything, but this is just kind of an artificial expensive function call. So then if you look down here, we're actually running this function four different times. So we run the function with a four, with a 10, and then a four again, and then a 10 again. So since it sleeps for one second, for every function call, then this entire program should take about four seconds. So if I run this, you can see that it uh, prints out that it's computing four and then prints the square, then computing 10 uh, and prints out the square and so on and so on. So the reason behind memoization is that if you saw here, it computed four and 10 the first time with the sleep and that's our artificial computing time. And that's fine because the first time that it sees it, it has to do that. But then when we got to the second one, um, we've already run those values once. And so instead of uh, computing those values again, it would be nice if we just remembered that answer. And remembering the answer is what memoization is all about. It, we are saving that result to a cache so that whenever we see that expensive function call again with the same values passed in, then instead of actually computing the values again, we can just return the result that we've already computed from that cache. So the way that I'm going to do this in Python here is I'm going to create a dictionary up here and I'm just going to call this EF underscore cache and the EF is just uh, for ex, uh, expensive function. So now what I'm going to do here is uh, right at the top of the function, I'm going to say if num, which is the parameter that we're passing in, is in the EF cache, then I just want to return the value from that dictionary. And also what I'm going to do down here is if it misses this conditional, if the number is not in the cache already, then I want to go ahead and do the artificial computation here. And then before I return the result, I just want to add that result to the cache. So actually a more clean way that I'm going to do this here is I'm just going to say result equals num, time num, num times num and then I'm going to copy this result here and put that in the cache and then I'm going to return the result there and save that. So now if I run this code again you can see here that it finished in two seconds and the output here it only computed the four one time and gave us our answer of 16 then it computed 10 one time and gave us the answer of 100 and then the second time through, you can see that it never hit this computation step. So it just automatically spit out 16 and automatically spit out 100. Now let me walk through exactly what happened here. So we did this result e equals expensive function and passed in our four. So whenever we passed, whenever we ran this function the first time, it came in and it said, is four in our cache? And it wasn't. So then it skipped over this conditional and it, printed the computing four, it slept for a second, uh, and then returned the result after it added the result to the cache. And then it did the exact same thing for the 10. Now the second time through, when we ran these functions, it came in here and right off the bat, it said, is our number in our cache? And yes, it was. So we immediately return the result that we saved right here from earlier. So in the case of this simple program, the memoization uh, cut our computation time down from four seconds to two seconds. Now for more complicated problems, then obviously this can be more or less drastic. 
Now there are some more advanced things that you can do with memoization. You can set up ways to where it uh, does memoization automatically and things like that. But really the point of this video was to just let you know exactly what memoization means if you ever see that in the workplace. And also maybe you can start thinking about uh, ways that it can benefit you in the language of your choice. So that about does it for this video. Uh, I would recommend going out and seeing different techniques for using memoization within uh, your programming language of choice. And it's definitely a nice skill to have in your tool belt. So I hope this video was useful for you all. If you have any questions, just ask in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.